Welcome to episode number 104 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media, and today presented to you by our good friends over at SeatGeek. I want to welcome back our good friend of the show, the Marlin shortstop Miguel Rojas, who I love for so many reasons, but two in particular. One, he is sporting his Chris Rose Rotation t-shirt. What is it, laundry day at the Ro- Rojas ho- household? Is- <laughs> Not really. It's, uh, it's because I'm back in the rotation and I... You know, I like to represent my my group, my uh, my family. Ah, you're a good dude. Just like I was representing you on my uh, on my 25th wedding anniversary vacation out in Cabo. Did you see that? I saw I saw that, and congratulations to you and Miss Rosie. Uh, feel uh, so so grateful for you guys going yeah. over there and actually representing with uh, the the Air Rojas shirt. It, yeah, it people was, were it asking was, me. They're like, good to watch. They're like Air Rojas. Where do you get that? Like, Come on. <laughs> Come on, are you not an avid listener of the Chris Rose Rotation? Shame on you. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, but here's why you're really my hero. We are taping this the day before it's being released. So this is on Wednesday. You guys just wrapped up a West Coast trip. You were in Anaheim like literally like 12 hours ago. And now right. you're on this show. Did you get any sleep last night? Well, it, it was hard, Rosie, because uh, this is this is something that the fans uh, sometimes don't know how hard it is for us players to turn the page. You know, actually, last night I had a really tough game. You know, I went all for five, and I I made a mistake uh, late in game. You know, to uh, to actually lose the game. Uh, that's something that uh, I don't. You know, I don't. I don't take easy on me. You know, I always take uh, things with a lot of responsibility, and I always trying to get better. And actually, those long flights are not easy to uh, to go with, you know. When you lose a game, you lose a series like that, and you start the season uh, just one and four. You know, it's really hard because, uh, I mean, mentally, there's a lot of challenges there to overcome things and, and continue to go forward and knowing that this is just getting started, you know, and you can go down on yourself that hard because, uh, I mean, today we take it, we take it as an off day, to regroup and to come back home and, and you know, play in front of your friends, in front, in front of your family. But at the end of the day, it's that, contos, that constantly battle with uh, your mind, yourself, and, and to trying to keep everybody, you know, up, upbeat and keep the head up because uh, you got to continue to play. So, I mean, nice like last night, I mean, you, I, 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 I didn't really sleep well and uh, I'm not going to sleep well. Like if, if we're not winning games on a daily basis, and it's actually not being um, the start of the season that I was thinking. But at the end of the day, man, is is that's that's what we go through as a player, and and we're happy to share with with people so they they have a little bit more of knowledge of of what we got have to get through. And I think that's why people love you. Um, and I, I don't want to harp on this, but it is it's a, a rare occurrence where we talk to a player the day after, you know, you ended the game the way that you did. Um, were you constantly replaying the play in your mind? I mean, it wasn't the easiest play you'll ever make, but it's one I'm sure you'll say, I got to make that 10 out, 10 out of 10 times. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a, it's a ground ball right at me. And the only the only thing is, uh, I mean, we were playing in, you know, and, and the ball was hit hard right at me. And I, I tried to block it instead of trying trying to use one hand and, and throw to the play. But, uh, I mean, that's something that, I mean, you're always going to learn from it. And I, I know next time, uh, when when this happened, I'm gonna react a little bit better. But uh, I mean, yeah, you constantly you continue to uh, to do that, uh, replay that that play in your head, and and actually, uh, it's it's got it has to be a, a way to stop it. You know, at some point, you just have to stop it and let it go and move on to the next day and to the next chart, chapter. Because uh, if not, it's gonna be too hard um, to overcome that situation. Um. So the start is obviously not what you guys had hoped at all. One and four after five games sucks. You guys haven't hit yet. All that sort of stuff that we knew going into the season that this team would be able to pitch. Um, if you get a little bit of hitting, you guys were going to be okay. How do you prevent yourself from pressing too much? And all you guys, when you know that that's the question mark surrounding this team. Yeah, no, definitely. That's the that's a, that's a biggest question right now. How how we get to uh, relax and enjoy the game and enjoy each other as a, as a team. I think uh, we got a pretty good team. And, and the, the things right now that, that I'm, I'm feeling in the clubhouse is a lot of people wanting to do too much. And for me, you know, when, when, you, start, when you start doing that, 
and start doing it for yourself, I think is when when things have started to go the way that I'm going right now, you know, like uh, uh, counting on this guy to do something, counting on the other guy, and instead of you putting the pressure on yourself, um, you just let it let it flow, you know, let, let, let the buy flow throughout the whole lineup and not counting just on one guy to do the job. Um, I, I think that's a, that's a big part of a, 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 like graining a, a new team together, you know, because uh, that's, that's the things that you're always going to uh, have to battle with. And I mean, it's just five games. It's right. uh, 150 something more. And we got an opportunity with the pitching that we, that we join, we have, I think we have a pretty good chance to, uh, to win a lot of baseball games and we can get hot real quick. And then if we get high, we, we we win five, six in a row, we're back in it. So yeah, um, I got I got confidence that that the group is gonna start relaxing a little bit more. Now playing at home, you know, uh, I mean the West Coast uh after spring training was kind of you know uh difficult because uh, uh the time change and all that. But I mean at the end of the day, we we have no excuses, we gotta keep going. Hey, you looking for a way to improve your health? I got a way. Take Athletic Greens every day. It is something that I'm doing now. I just started. Listen, I'm a guy that's over 50. We know that. We've talked about it on the podcast. Do I eat as many vegetables and fruits as I should? Probably not. But what Athletic Greens has, 75 high-quality vitamins and minerals, whole food source superfoods, and probiotics. They're going to help everything, including your gut. It's going to make it feel better. You're going to feel great. And you're probably thinking, okay, it's green. I got to either put it in my shake or stir it up with a, a eight ounces of water, which is what I do every morning. Listen, dude, throw it down. It tastes great. In fact, I got my 16-year-old son, Brady, who doesn't like vegetables at all to try. And he goes, Dad, this is pretty good. So I'm having him slam down a glass before he heads off to school every day. It contains less than one gram of sugar. There's no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, and it tastes great. It costs you less than three bucks a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habits. So to make things easy, Athletic Greens is going to have one free year supply of immune support, vitamin D, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash rose. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash rose to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Go get it now. All right, I do want to ask you one more thing about uh, yesterday's game. Tyler Wade stole second, and it looked like Jazz did a great job blocking him with his foot. You guys challenged. Like, Jazz is looking up. He's standing next to Wade at second base. He's like, dude, I got you. I got you. And I, I mean, yeah. were you part of that conversation? No, I was there. I was I was in the in the in the pitching and uh around the pitcher and the catcher uh on the pitching mound. And and I feel like I, I saw the same thing, but I talked to Joe Wendell a little bit too. He was at third base and he told me, I don't I'm not confident that they're gonna overturn this play because I've seen it before. You know, they they have to see that the the cleat or the the foot or or the hand is clearly not on the base to overturn the play. You know what I mean? And it was blocked. Yeah, it was it was blocked by by Jazz foot. But at the end of the day, you couldn't really tell if some part of the the cleat was touching the base. So that's why the the call the call stand. I I I, I didn't agree with it because uh, if it's if it's an out, it's an out. You know, you have to be. Uh, it, it can be that that gray area where it's inconclusive, and and I, we're just gonna give the benefit of the doubt to the umpires. You know, just because he made the call on the field. If he, I mean, that was clear. I think he never reached to the base, you know, block or not block. That's not a rule. I mean, I mean, if you're blocking with your feet, that's not, that's not something that, that, that you are not supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it's like, I don't know. It was a, I, I don't think it was the, the good, the right call, but at the end of the day, it's whatever they're doing uh, with the, with the replay. It was bullshit. Yeah, I, I feel the same way, but I mean, uh, what, you can't what, say what can I say? What I can. can I say? I can't. Exactly. Okay, I don't want you to get fined. I'll take the fine. If they want to <laughs> find me, fine. You can find me. It's not the first time they messed it up. No, uh, I agree. I agree with you. So is that the first time you've had the umpires announce to the crowd what's going on or anything? Well, we, we got we got one in San Francisco as oh. well. It's kind of, I mean, it's kind of more of the same, you know, it's just a, uh, I don't know. I guess it's to keep uh, the the fence involved a little bit more, and you know, 
give them a little bit an, an extra reason for uh, to share, you know, in the, in the game and to you know to to experience what we experience on the field. But uh, what is the difference between saying something, you know, and your signal out or safe? It's, yeah. it's, I mean, if you're gonna give me an explanation like last night, you know, like if you give me the explanation, okay, the call stands because we couldn't see on the replay that that the full couldn't get to the back, so that's why the guys in New York or whatever it is, they say uh, it's safe because we we saw a, a little bit of the cleat getting on the base and the tag was applying after. Yeah, if you explain me all that, it makes sense to me. But if you're just going to say the call in the field stands, is safe, it's the same thing of, of listen to whatever you listen to and seeing safe or out. You know, like I, I, don't, I, don't see, I don't see any reasons why we're doing this right now. You're so smart. You are so smart because that's exactly the way it is. Right. right. Give me a little bit of an explanation. Like, I get it. People don't like to speak publicly. Like, it's one of the biggest fears. Of, they've right. done a study here. Like, people speaking in public, it's one of the top two or three most fearful things people can do in life. And the right. umpires didn't get into this job so they could speak in front of 30 or 40,000 fans. I understand that. But right. at the same time, sometimes you got to adjust. Give me a little bit. Hey, you know what? I would love to have heard who was was it Phil Cuzzy last night that was the crew chief? No, it was um uh, um what is his name? Uh, I, I totally forgot. Um uh, uh, I'll you on... come back to you. I'll come back yeah. to you. No, don't worry about yeah. it. Maybe Rob will look it up for us tomorrow. But um Alfonso, Alfonso Marquez. Oh, Alfonso oh, Marquez. Yeah. He should have come out and he should have said, Hey, listen, Jazz did a great job blocking the base. Exactly. Really cool play. But we don't have enough evidence to overturn it. So we're going to let it stand as is. Like if you play to the crowd and then all of a sudden the crowd's like, Rah! and you'd be like, oh, okay, they're kind of into it. Yeah, I get, I get it. If, if, if they do it that way, you know, because uh, the umpires, uh, like you say, they're not there, you know, to explain plays to people. And I mean, I, I get it. I understand. But what's the reason why, you know, like I don't, I don't understand the reason why we're doing this. Yeah. Uh, by the way, do I have to introduce you now as Miguel Rojas, Marlins shortstop slash first baseman? <laughs> you see that the other day? I, <laughs> I, I got back to my, uh, to my days when I played. You know, you know that, that it was my 100th appearance at first base in the big leagues. Uh, that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of a lot, you know? How many? 100, 100 times uh, a first base in my <sighs> career. I had no That's, idea you played that many games at first base. Yeah, oh, I play a lot. Look at that little there, stab. There's, yeah, there's, there's, there, there was a lot of times where I came. Uh, I wasn't playing every day, and we have Justin Bora first base. Hmm. And after he got his last at bat and we was winning the game, I, I came in replacement at, at first base because so we got a pretty good shortstop defensively at the time at, at Danny Echeverria. Um, he was our, our everyday shortstop, and I was the, the kind of the backup infield guy. And uh, I play every position, you know. I play, I, I start a lot of games, a second short there, but I play a lot of replacement first base late in games. So um, when when I got to do this this uh, this position at first, I started I started just thinking that I was a shortstop playing at first, you know, and I was going to for every ball, and 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 I think the the team overall defensively was better with me at first because I was like, I was playing short at first, which is, um, which is something that I, that I always do. I mean, uh, is it, is it fun over there? Is it scary? Is it, what was it? Well, I, at this, at this point it's kind of different because I'm not used to anymore, you know, to bounce up, to bounce around. And when I play shortstop every day in, in that side of the field, it's different, you know, and I, I didn't take it that serious that day. Because when I start thinking too much about, okay, where am I? You know, the angles and all, all this stuff, you know, I, I need to get to a base. I just play and, you know, like I, I have fun doing it. So it was, mm. it was kind of fun playing for, for, for that little bit and taking, I, I think I got a good play uh, on a ball to my, mm. to my ride. Yeah. You know, I, it, was, it was fun. It was fun. Well, you know, you have to be kind of like the social chairman over there too. Like you, you're the welcoming committee. So if guys that you don't want guys to get on base, but inevitably it's going to happen. So you have to welcome them and talk to them and see how they're yeah, doing. You have to say, you, you have to say hi to everybody and, you know, um, ask a little question and, you know, how you doing? How's your day going? You know, how you feeling at the play? 
Yeah. Those are the kind of conversations that you have at first base. Well, who, Other than when you have a, a, a good friend, uh, I mean, you ask about her, their family or whatever happened last night or whatever. You know? Well, who who's the best first base greeter in baseball? Like when you get to first, who's the guy who's like, ah, oh, it's great to see you and catch up with them? <laughs> well, uh, I got to say Joy Barrow because he's so interesting. Uh, sometimes he speaks to me in Spanish right away. You know, he's trying to tell me that he's learning uh, this new song. And a quick little story. I don't know if I shared this before with you guys. I got to first base and he started saying, hey, just wait until you hear the song that, I, that I'm that going to play in the uh, for my vocal song. Uh, that that was fun. And and he was a Spanish song and he wanted to play because of uh, uh, Freddy Benavides, who used to be my field coordinator with the Reds. Now he's the bench coach or or he was a third base coach, first base coach at the time with the Reds. So he played that song and he was so... So so pumped and happy to tell me about about he walk us on for this for this series. Are you following Joey Votto on social media? I mean, you have to, you know, like it's pure <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> I mean, I I really, I mean, I, I'm I'm proud of Joey and the way that he overcomes a lot of things because I remember uh, when he stopped playing for a little while and he had to go to a rehab assignment on Dayton. Because he, you know, he was uh, dealing with a lot of a lot of stuff, you know, mental off the field and and all all that kind of stuff. And and now seeing how he's enjoying the game and how well he's doing, you know, um, after a couple of years that he was kind of downplaying, you know, his his abilities because I I think he's an MVP caliber player, you know. Mm-hmm. And he got a couple of years that I felt like he wasn't happy with the way he was playing. And one of the reasons why is I feel like he is, he was taking like too much on himself and too, he was taking the game and shit too serious. And now he's relaxing, he's having fun, and he's doing all this stuff that he's doing on social media and actually enjoying the game of baseball. I wish I can do that a little more like Joey's doing. Well, I think there's a fine line there, right? Because you want to be professional, but I don't know if you heard any of him being hooked up on the uh, – on the ESPN broadcast where he was talking, you know, he had an IFB, he had an earpiece in his ear while wearing a microphone on defense. And I thought it was great, great stuff. He was having fun. You know, he welcomed Ozzy Albies to first base. And then he was explaining to Carl Ravitch and the guys what he was thinking defensively, what he was doing, why it's so important for him at age 38 to still be an everyday first baseman and not a DH. And I sit there and I think a little bit about your former president and Derek Jeter. I always wondered if Jeter was having fun because it looked like such a business. And to him, he would always explain, hey, winning's fun. So that's all I care about. But at the the end of a 20-year career, I wanted him to not have any regrets. Like, did he soak it all in? Because there's so many fun little aspects of being a professional athlete and a baseball player that once it's done, it's done. Like you can't go back and recreate that stuff, Miggy. Yeah, sometimes you don't. You sometimes you stop having fun because you're taking it too serious, and all all you care about is winning, and all you care about is preparing for these games every single night, and you forget about the the most important part of it, which is uh, enjoying the moment and enjoying every opportunity. And I think that's why we press as as a as a athlete. You know, I think that's why we start like taking too much on our shoulders and putting so much pressure on ourselves just because of that, because we stop worrying about um, having that, that little fun that you're talking about, you know, all those opportunities. Uh, sometimes we, we don't see it in front of us because we're so locked in on winning the game and doing whatever it takes to win, you know? And I know for, for people like Derek, it was, it was more important to win the game than, than have fun on the field. But for other guys, like, a, a teammate of my jazz, he's he's enjoying the game and at the same time he's competing, you know? That's something that you always got to find the balance of doing both, you know? Like you have to enjoy and you have to have fun doing whatever you love doing without without stop competing, you know? You're never going to stop competing if you're having fun. So for me, it's, it's, it's finding that balance and I think uh, that's, the, that's, the right, that's the right thing to do in baseball. Yeah, I love what Jazz was doing on your West Coast trip, man. He saw one kid with the Jazz Chisholm t-shirt and like the iced out chain and all that sort of stuff. Ended up playing catch with him. And I I mean, you guys get it. 
the Marlins middle infield. You guys get it. Yeah, it's, it's fun for the game, and it's, it's, it's what the fans deserve. You know, if that kid and that family um, make the, the sacrifice to go there to watch him play, and he went out of his way, you know, to actually give, give, give this kid before the game a little bit of time so he can meet him and, and, and doing all that that he did yesterday, it was amazing because you're going to have a, a fan for life, not just for, for jazz, but for the Marlins organization and for baseball. That's, that's what you're looking for. You know, you're looking for guys in every team to do that so we can grow the game and continue to have uh, fans in our game and fans that love the game that we play for, for a long time. Yeah, I mean, think about that. He'll have that. When you meet somebody that is one of your idols as a kid, like I remember the first big leaguer I ever met was a guy named Jerry Dibzinski. He was from Cleveland. He played for the Indians. He was like a utility player at best. He wasn't great, but he spoke at one of my uh, summer camps. When, and we were so excited. We we're like, oh, my God, Jerry Dibzinski's here. And uh, I mean, that sticks with me. That, that was eight or nine-year-old Chris Rose. I've now been around thousands of professional athletes, including some of the best in the history of their respective sports. And that's what sticks with me for the first time. And you will, you will forever remember that time. And, and, and that's kind of what makes you follow the game a little bit more. And I'm, I bet you, you follow his career, you know, until the end. Right. So yeah, I was, that's why, that's why we keep, we, we're trying to keep growing the game and actually do things off the field that, that continue to engage fans, you know? into this that's why we continue to do this you know every single every single year you know through the up and downs through through the best of my uh of my days in baseball through the the downtime that, that i mean we're not feeling that great but we're still like giving like the real insight of what is you know a season in a in a in a life of a baseball player yep yep are there any fight fans in the house yeah, I can see y'all raising your hands. Well, have you checked out ppv.com? It is the best new way to stream pay-per-view events. They got great interactive platforms with live chats, real-time fan videos, and other cool features. It is a great fight fan experience. In fact, get it going this weekend, Saturday, April 16th. You got the Spence Ugas fight. It's streaming live on ppv.com. It is the most interactive way to stream pay-per-view events. There's going to be a live chat hosted by Corey Erdman. That's going to be a ton of fun. He'll have special guests. As I mentioned, it's very interactive. And everybody who orders Suspense Ugas is automatically entered to win two tickets plus hotel and airfare to an upcoming ppv.com event. Once again, I'm going to repeat that. Anybody that orders the Spence Ugas is automatically entered to win two tickets and hotel and airfare to an upcoming ppv.com event. That ain't bad. So once again, Spence against Ugas, Saturday, April 16th, ppv.com. Don't miss it. Click, click the link in the description. We'll see you there. So you got to see a, a buddy of yours in the first series of the year, Jock Peterson, your old um, minor league roommate in the Dodgers farm system. Nice to catch up with him. Oh yeah, it was. Uh, it, it's always nice to see Jock. He's a uh, uh, such a such a great guy and uh, energetic people. You know that that when you next to him, you just you know you just can feel the positive vibe and all the things that 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 we remember and ca- we catch up about a couple of days uh, that we sleep together in in Fresno, California, and Champ, his brother, came and stayed with us uh, at, at the same hotel room. And I remember Jock sleeping in a in a little couch and Champ sleeping on the bed right next to me, or going to 7-Eleven for ice cream later at night at 1 a.m. in the morning after the games. I mean, all those all those memories came back to us. And that happens like 10 years ago, you know? And every time that you got that you got to see him and and all the things that we 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 experienced together, that came back to mind and it's really nice. Yeah, well, Champ has kind of become a, a star in recent years, right? I mean, you know, he and Albert Pujols, a special connection. Um, and, you know, of course, when the Dodgers went on their World Series run in 2020 and then last year when the Braves, Champ is always there front and center. And it's just 
it's great to see. They have a really, really wonderful relationship. Oh, yeah. And, and Chem is always being a star, you know, even before the, the TV time and the, the, the opportunities that, that, that he got on, uh, on, on Jock's career. I think before that, he was like a really special, you know, person and individual, you know, uh, always, always trying to help, always trying to, you know, be around the, the field and talking to other guys and players, you know, and, and I mean, it's something that I, I, I really appreciate, not, not just Jock, but the whole family welcoming to their house in San Francisco. Uh, when we play over there, I, I went to dinner. I got to spend time with, with their family and they drive us uh, from, from San Fran uh, to their house, from their house to our, our hotel room. And I always want to remember that those times when we were just rookies, you know. Uh, he was apparently a pretty good football player in high school, if I remember correctly. Yeah, like, and and his sister is a pretty uh, pretty good soccer player. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Champ is involved with basketball and, you know, the front office uh, with Golden State. I don't know if he's doing that anymore, but uh, he's, uh, he, he was there. And, yeah, a family that, that grew up in baseball and in sports. And, and Jock, Jock himself was a really good football player, I heard. Yeah, you know what he's not good at? Dying his hair. It? Oh, yeah, it's too blonde. <laughs> it's too blonde right now, man. I mean, it. I mean, he always he always find a way to uh to be different, you know. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Hey, I imagine you're a lot like me, and you love it when Major League Baseball celebrates April fifteenth at Jackie Robinson Day. Everybody wearing the forty two. They look so clean. It's so important to tell the story of Jackie Robinson to all the young people that love baseball. In fact. Tops wants you to celebrate Jackie Robinson Day by heading into the Tops Bunt Card Trader app for all new content of number 42. Now, keep in mind, the app is free to play. There's new collectibles that are released every day, including a fan favorite, Tops Inception, which drops tomorrow. So collect and trade your favorite players from across the league with baseball fans around the world. And when I'm talking around the world, I'm talking like as far as Australia. That's where our buddy Pete Moylan is from. I've never seen somebody that is into the Top Spun app as Pete Moylan. I've told you this before. The guy spent all our time at the John Boy Media Spring Training Compound in Phoenix, Arizona, opening all his packs. He's like, Rosie, what'd you get? Rosie, Rosie. I was like, dude, step back. I haven't even had time to turn on my phone yet today. Once I do, I will open up my pack and we'll continue to have fun. And you should as well. New packs are available every day featuring brand new content, original artwork, and classic Tops card design. So download the Tops Fun app by clicking the link in the description or visiting the App Store or Google Play. Well, did you see the Atlanta rings? Did you get a did you get a look at those things? Oh yeah. I haven't I haven't seen. I, I can't wait for, for Soler to get his. Oh because yeah. Soler is with us now. He's gonna get his. And I, I, I think it's a great piece, man. Yeah. It looks nice, clean, you know. With all those diamonds and the A on 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 blue, uh, the navy blue, it's, it's it's really good, really cool. Yeah. And you know, on Ronald Acuna's ring, uh, on the top of the A is a pair of sunglasses. They just put it on there because <laughs> they just put it there. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. My bad. Yeah. What do you think of that? Okay. By the it's way, okay. the whole little Ronald. Did you listen to Ronald's um, Instagram live? No, I didn't listen to it. I didn't listen to it. I just I just don't wanna. Uh, you know, make any comment because I know when when people translate whatever we say in Spanish to English, uh -huh. sounds a little bit different to what he was saying. Right. I feel like he, I mean, he he didn't want to create any confrontation with Freeman. He was just being open of like, I mean, sometimes it is what it is. You know, you don't have the best uh, relationship with every teammate. Right. But that doesn't mean that you don't love him and you don't gonna you don't gonna go to reward with them you know i i feel like us as a latin players we got a little bit better connection with the latin players mm -hmm. and some other you know some other um players in the clubhouse and i mean we're coming from a different culture you know a night black on the on the face it shouldn't be that that i mean it shouldn't be a problem when you're that good of a player you know well i mean it, it you also take care of business and i mean they're, if they're rules, they're rules. But uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's whatever they, they, they're doing over there, you know? Yeah, I, I understand the whole, hey, listen, if there's rules and you're an employee, you've got to pay attention to the rules. But to mm -hmm. me, they're just so archaic. 
some of them. I, do you guys have rules with the Marlins that we should know about? We do. We do. What are? Yeah, they? I mean, I mean, there's no there's no rules. There's ways that we do things in the organization. You okay. know what I mean? Like it's what? like it's like you're not wearing wearing earrings to play uh, outside. You know, you're not wearing earrings. You're not wearing your 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 hair like uh, to your shoulders. You know, you have to keep it short and clean. You wear a sport jacket on the road when you when you get the flights. Uh, you like th- there's some different things that you don't do in an organization because that's that's the way that we do things here. You know what I mean? So it's it's like a way for us to keep everybody in line, so that way the manager doesn't have to worry about so many other things. Cool. So we put the rules in and and we go by it. You know? Okay. And I don't want to put you in an awkward position, but I. I just don't get it. I don't get it. And like, I come from, I'm a 51. So if anything, I should be looking at it the other way, but I'm the type of person, if I were a boss or a leader or Mm -hmm. an owner or something, I would say, Hey, be whoever you are, you know, play hard, show up on time, respect your teammates. And that's it. Those are the, aren't those the rules that we should be living by? Like, is it because the hair is here and there's no earrings that that's the reason we're a first place team. Like, I don't buy that. No, I don't, I don't think so either. I, like I say, I mean, uh, an eye black shouldn't be a, a, a big, a big deal. You know, if you're a good player and you're, you're respecting your teammates and you're showing up on time and you're doing everything that you have to do, be yourself. I have no problem with that. The only thing is that you have to have some kind of regulations. So things don't get out of, you know, out of track. For me, if you let someone to wear an earring and, and you don't like that, and then someone like someone else gonna do something else. You know what I mean? So it's it's that's how you keep things on track. And in baseball, it's always been like that. You know, in baseball, there's always gonna be rules, depends on the team that you play, they're gonna be different. The Yankees have the facial hair, right. you know. Everybody when they when they get there, they take the facial hair away, you know. If they they if they're starting softening a little bit of those rules and they say okay you can do a little, so you're gonna have guys with beer like right here I promise you, you know what I mean? Because people always trying to taste the limits, trying to push the 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 envelope a little bit more. And if you don't have the rules, you're gonna have people like doing whatever they want, which yeah, is but something the that. Rules, my my whole point is, shouldn't the rule be, hey? If stretch is 410, your ass better be not show up at 411. That's a rule to me that makes sense. It's not. I agree with you. Right. That's, that's another like, rule. I love your beard. You want to wear a beard, Miggy, right now? Awesome. I think it looks great. I don't think it looks great on everybody, but that's their choice. You want to wear a Dallas Keuchel beard down to your ankles? Hey, bro, as long as you're throwing strikes and getting people out and treating everybody in the clubhouse with respect, cool. I'm good with it. I, just I understand. I understand that. I just don't understand where we have kind of lost our way where, well, we must keep people in line with their earrings and their hair and their facial hair because we don't want them to then keep pushing it. Like, I don't know which direction that would go. Like, I just, I'm, lo- I, I'm a little lost with it all, I think. No, and I, I get it. And I understand. The only thing is like, that's how, that's how this game has been for a long time, yeah. you know? And it's always been this way, you know, when you get to a big list, you have to kind of follow a little bit of the, you know, the ways that the organization has been doing things for, you know, yeah. for a long time. And you're not, you're not here to change who we are, you right. know, and that's something that, that, that we have to understand as well as players, you know. Um, you recently went to the Miami Open, a little tennis. Are you a tennis fan or did you just go because you wanted to just see what it was like? A couple a couple of years ago, I start um, I'm start getting into tennis uh, to play to play a little bit, and mm. I, I always like I always like the sport because I was, I'm I'm really good at ping pong, so uh, I wanted to start playing a little bit more of tennis, you know, and and actually taste um, my my package there, you know, like if I if I have a good uh, a skill package for for tennis, like I was in uh, in ping pong. And um, I mean, I like it and I like it as a, as a workout. Now that I understand a little bit more and I know, I like to watch a game and I think it's fun. Um, games are, are, are really, uh, 
kind of interesting because uh, I mean you see like the the techniques of different players, you know, and what they like to do and what they're good at and what their weakness are a little bit. And yeah. I understand that a little bit because I play now and I know my my backhand is not as good as my forehand and and for players I can see that a little bit. And I mean uh, I enjoy just watching a uh, high level, you know, competition sports. All right. So are we, are, are, are you adept enough to like put spin on the ball and cut it and stuff like that? Well, with, like I said, with my forehand, I can do it a little bit better. Okay. I can spin the ball and I can, I can do the top spin better, but uh -huh. with the, with the backhand it's kind of, you know, I'm trying to pass it. I, I just, I just trying to put it in the other core right. without like being on the neck or, or way too far. How's the your service so, game? I mean, it's not that good, but I, I mean, I don't play, I don't play really serious game to be serving like you know. I play against my wife and you know against you know my friends and stuff like that. Oh, I like that. It's like that. it's just to do like a little cardio. I don't like to be on the on a treadmill or on a on a bike. Uh, I'm not gonna let you uh, slide about the ping pong game because that's big stuff in Major League Baseball clubhouses. Are you so if we have a seating tournament? In the Marlins clubhouse is Miguel Rojas the one seed? I gotta be I gotta be close to top top three because uh, Gary Cooper is really good, and we gotta we gotta we got Richard Blyer, which is which is decent too. So for me, between between us three, it's gotta be a uh, one, two, and three right there. Do you have your own paddle? I I do. I have my own paddle here, and I'm I'm a big spinning guy. Oh. So um, when I surf, when I surf in, in, in ping pong, my spin is really hard to, uh, to defend. So do you throw the ball in the air and then hit it? Or you yeah, I throw the ball in the air and I, I caught it and stuff like that. Yeah. We have to play one day. I want the uh, next trip from, uh, from John Boy have to be to a Florida, uh, close to a Florida complex. Yeah. Yep. Well, the problem is you, your games are 18,000 miles away in that state. You know, you can get to every game right. in Arizona, you know, within an hour. Exactly. No, that's right. That's right. Yeah. But yeah, we had it. We had a heck of a ping pong tournament. I'm not going to spoil it because it's going to come out, and, mm -hmm. you know, but it's uh, you would have uh, you would have certainly held your own. There's no question. No, yeah, yeah, I would like definitely. to see you take on Jake in ping pong. I mean, whoever, man, I on um, ping pong, I count on me. Definitely. A hundred percent. Whenever, whenever you want to you want to set up a, a game. I'm 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 here for it. So basically what you're telling me is you're going to kick everybody's ass in John Boy Media in ping pong and take our money in poker. Yes. Absolutely. I can do those those two things. I want to tell I can you promise I can promise you that that I'm going to take everybody's money in poker because uh, I mean that's not how it works. But uh I'm counting on me on ping pong for sure. Ploof is just, just bring it. Ploof is like our our uh he's our poker extraordinaire i think he's, oh really yeah he's pretty good he's pretty good from what i've heard maybe maybe because he's pulling people to get the money he's fake rich guy yeah i think so but actually yeah. a john boy he is rich guy right yeah that's right that's right too. <laughs> not for long i mean you know jimmy and jake are, are moving up the ladder but i just want right. to just want to kind of let you know right, right um Home opener. Are we uh, are we super excited for it? Are there different emotions, or is it just? Oh, uh... Yeah, yeah, definitely. I uh, I feel like that's what, that's exactly what we needed right now. You know, we need to play in our in our home ballpark. Actually, uh, a lot of people's gonna be playing in front of their families. You know, uh, mm. uh, players that that just sign here, like Soler, Garcia, and and all of those guys that that live here. You know. And they're gonna be playing in front of their families, and I think it's gonna be fun. And Miami's been preparing for for this year for a long time, and I, I think it's gonna be excited at the ballpark. Couple changes with uh with our with the lights. I think we're gonna have like new lights that they're gonna be like you know doing those effects uh, during the game and before the game. They're gonna be shut down and they're gonna play a a, a big scoreboard uh, videos and stuff like that. And I think it's gonna be exciting because uh, you know when you play under the roof you can do a lot of different things with that i like it well i'm i'm energized for you i'm excited for you i feel good for you i think it's going to be fun uh are your kids excited 
I don't know if they're gonna go. I feel like they oh. they go to uh they go they go to a lot of like Sunday games when oh. you know it's not too it's not too hard for our 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 daughter. You know the little one. She's just uh, sixteen months, and right. sometimes you know it's it's really hard for them to stay there for nine innings. You know, so I mean it's kind of a lot to us to to my wife or you know the people who are taking care of them to be there for nine innings, just running around them and and trying to keep it on the on the seats. So for me, it's like I mean whenever whenever they want to go, they go because it's it's close to my house. But uh, um. I don't know if they're going tomorrow. Hopefully. Okay. No, I get it. Young kids. It's hard to travel. Uh, it's hard to yeah. travel at 16 months because they're running up and down the aisles in the airplane. Yeah. That's brutal. And then it's hard to take them to baseball games. I remember Definitely. both very well. Um, I really appreciate you coming on because I know this has been a tough, tough turnaround for you. Just traveling back from Anaheim to Miami, getting no sleep, all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to finish you by uh, – Showing you the wheel of moderately interesting things, which has brand new categories since the last time we saw. Let me see. Let me see what you got there. Yeah, we've got some. Uh, we've got some interesting ones. Let me see here. Feeling good. The small screen. Meet and greet. Opening wage. And business okay. section. So here we go. Nice. Ready. See. You. Small screen. Do you have your phone nearby? It's right here. Okay. What is the picture? Oh, yes. That is oh, a win. Oh, you want to see that? Yes. Yeah. Look at this. We want to see the picture. It's your two kids. I love yeah, that. Well, I don't want to. Yeah. Okay, let me close this. Oh, it's still there. Right? Oh. So, just a reminder, but I don't, I don't want it there. Yeah. So, there's, yeah. So, my my oldest son uh, carrying my, my daughter, so... Is, is there. I always remember them and I like the picture because they, they always going to be that small to me. You know? Exactly. Even when they're growing and they're running, running around. Yeah. <clears throat> For sure. I'm going to cause interference if I put my picture up, but it's an old picture. It's probably, uh, I think it's actually at a an Indians game uh -huh. six years ago. So my 16 year old, who's now taller than I am, he's 6'2", he doesn't even come up to my shoulders in it. And I'm like, I can't, I don't have the heart to change right. the picture. Exactly. Same thing with me. Like people ask me, why, why you don't change that picture? Because I mean, you probably have um, better, better pictures, but you can see this one yeah. right here. So this is my, this is my son when he was a. Uh, oh, little, 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 little. Dude, <laughs> dude those yeah. are pre Lego days right there. Yeah. Lego days. Exactly. We still days. building some Legos. Hey, um, listen, I really appreciate it. I felt terribly even asking you to do it at this time because I knew you're going to be on a day off and you're going to be dog tired. Can you at least get a nap in? No, I will for sure. After I, I'm going to pick up my son at the school right about in maybe half an hour. Okay. And, uh, and I'm going to enjoy the rest of my afternoon with him and maybe nap here or, or go to bed early. So yeah, be ready maybe. for tomorrow. You could get like if, when it's bedtime for the kids, maybe it's Miguel uh, Rojas's bedtime too. Yeah, the, let, let, let me be honest with you. I've been I've been watching a lot of video today. I went to my backyard and hid in the cage. Uh, I done a lot of baseball stuff today. I need to get I need to get shit going, and I feel like that's the only way for me to to do it. You know, through work. If you if if I continue to work and I I continue to to do whatever it, it takes, you know, to get better. I feel like that's how I'm going to come out on top. Like I always been, you know, that's, that's, that's how I do it in my career. And that's how I'm going to continue to do it. So I've been watching a lot of videos. I, I hit in the cage for a, around like 30 minutes and now we're ready to go. Tomorrow is another day. Aren't you tired? Not really. I don't feel it right now. Maybe, maybe in a couple of days I, I will start feeling it, but uh, right now I'm fine. Did you sleep at all on the plane? No, not last night. It was hard to sleep last night. It's actually, after after games like that, uh, you don't like you. It's it's really hard to stop thinking about it. You just like you said, you still you still like playing the the the, the same play on your head over and over, or or the bats or whatever it is. But it's tough sometimes. Uh, mental mental breaks are 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 good, and sometimes taking your mind away from the game. Sometimes you have to continue to uh, continue to work. 
God, I appreciate your honesty, man. It's, always, brother. Always. It's one of the million reasons people love you. So um, let's go get some knocks in the home opener. Go shake let's it off. It. Go have yep. fun. We'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. We'll set up a guest maybe sometime in the near future. I know we've had some talks about trying to get Javi Baez on this show. Love to get him. Yeah. Uh, that would, that would be a good one. He's never on the freaking East Coast. Same. Yeah, the same same. Same times, but uh, I mean, we we figured something out for sure. Okay. Cool. Hey, uh, best to you and your family. I appreciate it. Special shout out to our producer extraordinaire, the one and only Robbie Scirocco as well. For Miguel Rojas, I am Chris Rose. We will see you next time on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.